Hi, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, I really appreciate it. It is a care collab of my Colmenara Maasai Red, and today I'm teaming up with Art and Orchids. And I saw that we have orchids in common, and within a very short turnaround time, we have organized a care collab because both of us have Colmenara Maasai Red, and I am so pleased because I was going to talk about my Colmenara on my own, but it feels a little weird to be doing that these days, to be honest. So Art and Orchids, thank you so much for taking the time to jump onto the Care Collab initiative. And let's talk about Colmenara Maasai Red. Mine is enormous. It is so big, it sits in an egg crate because I cannot otherwise carry her, especially where she lives at the moment, right at the west side of my south-facing blooming alley. That is her home for the time being because of these gorgeous, massive, massive six spikes that she has produced. She doesn't look presentable, I admit. The leaves are burnt and there's a lot of stress this orchid has to undergo. She lives outside in my Spanish climate, southern Spain, for the entire year, including winter which can drop down to five degrees Celsius, and that is way too cold, especially in my setup here with LECA and self-watering. The evaporative cooling around the roots, the leaf tips with the cold air, it is not conducive to this orchid. Preferably minimum of 15 degrees, especially if in LECA and self-watering, or inorganic media as such, but 15 degrees is a minimum this orchid would prefer. But I am so grateful that she puts up with the inadvertent commas abuse of my cold winters. Otherwise, I would not be able to have her. I do not have space for this orchid indoors during the winter months when it gets really cold. Her time is right about now, April, the night temperatures are a steady 15 degrees Celsius. It's just going to get hotter. And by the time it gets hotter towards more midsummer, there will be another stress factor she has to endure. And that is my dry, dry heat. I don't have any humidity in my environment here, in my climate that is conducive to growing oncidiums that prefer to have a lot of airflow but also a lot of humidity. So I have two factors working against the Colmenara and myself. That is my very cold winters where she has to endure living outside and my very hot, dry Southern Spanish summer. So this is her ideal time. I've got temperatures now at night that are 15 degrees Celsius, beautiful. And my days are around 23, 24, perfect. So her blooms are able to last a little bit longer. If she were to bloom a little bit later in the year, I probably wouldn't get much time out of her. But so far she has already been in bloom three and a half, maybe four weeks. And as the blooms keep opening, she does drop the lower part of the blooms that have opened first. A bloom itself may last seven, maximum 10 days in my environment, but the whole spectacle, because they do open bit by bit afterwards. You can see there's some more at the end. The whole spectacle will be a six to seven week event. She's at her prettiest right now, minus the leaves, because I've only lost about six blooms so far, if that. Maybe tomorrow I'll lose some more. Out of 90, I think I counted 90 or 91 buds. Pretty amazing. She is not fragrant, but she is currently at her best presentation regarding her blooms. She is very, very prone to losing the pollen really, really fast. And we'll go in and have a look at that right now. So you see the beauty of this is actually if a spike can have all the pollen on it because the contrast of the dark, dark, deep, rich red, and then the white spotting down the line of the spike, that is, for me, the perfect, perfect presentation. 
but even new blooms, they lose their pollen very, very quickly. And I do have my paintbrush out because if I see an aphid, we'll get to that next. I want to be able to brush it off at the same time. But yeah, the dark contrast between the red and then the white pollen, it would be really nice to have a presentation, something. Yeah, you see even here, they're already coming off. I've seen bees around my Maasai Red. Seeing as she has no fragrance, she doesn't have bright colors. I don't know, I don't have the eyes of a bee. I don't know what they see, but I've seen bees around them. So maybe that is why the pollen are popping off quite quickly. But that is what makes this so beautiful. So you can get the Colmenara Maasai, just normal, but that would have a little bit of white on the lips. And this one is named red simply because of this beautiful, deep red, solid lip. This color now shows true on camera. There is no problem with the camera picking it up. Right here, this is exactly the color as is the orchid. The spikes are approximately 80 centimeters long. Incredible. Now, usually a pseudobulb will develop one spike on each side of the pseudobulb. And last year, actually, I had two spikes developing on each side. So that was seven spikes last year, but I did fertilize her a little bit less during this past year for this blooming because if she continues to grow those kinds of pseudobulbs i'm going to be in trouble very quickly i would like to keep her in the pot for another year at least like this but that'll all depend on where the new growths come out and i believe this side will have space maybe this side yeah this side will be good for one more year so you can see clearly that there are two plants in here, the way that they have grown outwards. This is going to be interesting to repot one day. But yes, yeah, speaking of pests, I have thankful I don't have many pests to deal with on her. I do get itty bitty little green aphids, like right here, there we go. They're easy to brush off and they're gone. And just earlier today, I saw a mealybug, which was the first time. I don't normally get mealybugs on her at all, but she does do well in these spring months. And then she does well also in the fall months before the cold temperatures hit. I do fertilize her a lot when she is in active growth and when she is in spike, like now, 300 parts per million, she will drink that up quite quickly. The pot is enormous, but that reservoir, never mind, those roots are down and they are absorbing the reservoir fast. So I fertilize at 300 parts per million. Every single time I fill the reservoir, I flush in between filling up the reservoir with a lot of RO water, as you can imagine. It's like a bucket goes in and around. So I put her on this little stand here and then I go around with a bucket of plain RO water. In my case, I have to pH it down because of how high my pH comes out of the tap. So even my RO water doesn't actually get down to seven, I get eight into my reservoir. So I pH down to flush to about 6.5 and then it's just one bucket goes in to flush her out. Then I fill up the reservoir again with full-on fertilizer. So we've discussed the temperature. We've discussed, oh, we haven't discussed light. Oh yes. Well, in my south alley of my growing space, it is surrounded by curtains and trellis. So she will get dappled sunshine. And in the winter, she does get direct sun because of the angle of the sun, but only in the winter. In the summer, she is totally in bright, bright shade, which is very relative because here in Southern Spain, I've got a lot of light, no matter if the sun is shining on the orchid or not. For me, bright shade could be direct sun in another climate, but I don't 
want to have direct hot summer sun on her leaves, seeing as she has to struggle through the lack of humidity, which in my summer months is around 30%. And I have to say that we also get very, very hot winds. Now the question is for this year, should I find a place indoors? The dining room is pretty empty and put her by the glass in the dining room and keep her indoors, keep her a little bit more protected, but then she won't get as much light because the angle of the sun, wow. If I'm not comfortable with how much light my Phalaenopsis have to deal with during the winter, then the Oncidium, she won't be happy. I doubt that she will be happy with that little light. So it's a little fine game, it's a dance. I prefer to have these blooms every single year, a reliable blooming as opposed to pretty leaves, which, yeah, I'm not growing for shows. I keep telling myself that. That is sort of my little comfort there. I'm not growing them to show them. So for me, it's about the blooms. So I get a lot, a lot of light, even though it is full shade during the hottest parts of the year, which we will be coming up to in a few months, two months or so, and then it all changes again. Absolutely stunning. This orchid just has me. And if you're still around, a little fun fact, I bought her because I was born and raised in Kenya. And the Maasai tribe are a tall, proud tribe. Beautiful people, beautiful culture. And they wear the red togas or the cloths, it's not a toga. They just put a cloth around themselves and fasten it at their shoulder. And those cloths have this color, this one. And she is very, very suitably named, considering how orchids are sometimes named with the funkiest and strangest name. This one is, in my opinion, very, very aptly named to be Maasai Red. Good job on whoever did that. So forgiving and floriferous and vigorous. A beast, highly recommended if you have the space. I'm just glad that she puts up with what I put her through in order to keep her in my collection. Very, very much worth it, in my opinion. This is definitely something I appreciate to see every year. Thank you so much to Art and Orchids. Thank you for the quick turnaround, for being so flexible. I look forward to seeing your Colmenara Masai Red more up close and personal. And if anybody else is interested, the link to Art and Orchids will be in the description below. I appreciate you spending your time here with me. Should you also own a Colmenara Maasai Red and you see this video a little bit further down the line, then may I encourage you please to send me an email or leave it in the comments below so that I can get you on the list if you're interested to do the future updates together with us. I would be very, very happy to include you. Email or just a comment, but eventually I would need an email so that we can communicate and coordinate. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I appreciate you here. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and please stay safe. Bye.